combating nutrition disinformation and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we're here with yet another episode of your favorite show. It's called Jimmy Rants. And if you're brand new to Jimmy Rants, go to JimmyRants.com, J-I-M-M-Y-R-A-N-T-S.com. And the way it works is we start off on Instagram Live. That's why I say, what's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. We're here on Instagram Live and all these beautiful people coming in now to engage in the content live, like Lauren saying hello. Hello, Lauren. Um, and so we start there. You can watch the replay for 24 hours on Instagram. Then we pop it on over to YouTube, where so many of you are watching these now. Thank you so much for watching the Jimmy Rants past episodes over on YouTube. And then the all new Jimmy Rants podcast, uh, which is available wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google, uh, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever you listen. Uh, we have a show that is the best of the best of these Jimmy Rants. And all of it, again, is housed at JimmyRants.com. So let's pin today's topic because this is a good one, you guys. Because one of the things that I hear from people about keto is, you know, I would do keto, but it's far too expensive for my budget to be able to eat all of those foods that you have on a ketogenic diet. And so this stems from the notion that all you eat on a ketogenic diet is meat and that meats are very expensive as compared to junky, crappy, cheap food. And thus, because of that, because the meats are so expensive and junk food is so inexpensive, they make the conclusion that keto is far too expensive and that they can't afford it but let me break down the numbers for you because I actually did this. So a little bit of context here. I used to uh, eat, and this is no joke, you guys, 1,600 grams of carbohydrate a day. 1,600. Now, most of that was the 16 cans of Coca-Cola I used to drink. And Coca-Cola, I'd get the big 12 packs back in the day for $2.99. And I would just drink those constantly. I would have Little Debbie snack cakes, which I could buy 10 boxes for $10, which I think I saw over at the supermarket the other day. They still have it all these years later, 10 boxes for $10. Um, and I would have two boxes of that at a time. Um and Little Debbie snack cakes are, are, were a big part, but fast food, I would go and have fast food. Back at, today, I hear it's very expensive to eat fast food, but back in the day, you could get a Big Mac supersized fries and a drink for about 3 or $4. Um, so all of these things that seemed like cheap food, but here's the difference, you guys. When you go keto, you're not eating as often as when you're a carb burner when you're a sugar burner. So when I used to drink all those sodas, I used to eat all those snack cakes, I used to have all the fast food and all of those things, I would constantly have to feed the beast and I'd come back from lunch. And what's the first thing I'm doing about 30 minutes after I'm back from lunch? I'm going up to the vending machine and I'm grabbing something out of there that was overpriced. And so I actually did an analysis of all the food I used to eat then and what I eat now. And the way I eat now is mostly grass-fed uh, and organic and pastured meats. I try to do the highest quality vegetables that I can, grow my own vegetables. I do have free-range uh, chickens in my backyard, so I get fresh um, produce that way, fresh um, eggs that way. Um, and then the fats that I purchase are mostly the grass-fed butter, organic, um, extra virgin coconut oil, uh, pastured lard, those kinds of things become the fats, avocados. So I did an analysis of the amount of money I spent on all that junk food, which again, mind you, I was probably having to eat every couple of hours because I was constantly hungry, which I now know was a direct result of hormones going crazy on me 
primarily I just kept stoking insulin, which kept making my body push out more hunger signals to me to keep eating more and more and more. So I constantly was eating. I added all of that up. And then I added up what I spend on that quality food now. And would you believe now eating the higher quality grass-fed meats, cooking in grass-fed butter and extra virgin coconut oil and pastured lard and having eggs and taking care of the chickens and all the everything, growing my own vegetables, would you believe that my bill for food is one-third of what it used to be? One-third! So I'm not spending near as much money on food even though I'm eating the highest quality foods. And you might be thinking, how in the world does that work? All right, think about it this way. Let's say you wake up in the morning and you decide to have breakfast, okay? You decide, okay, I'm hungry enough. Let me have two, three eggs. Let me have um, some bacon or some sausage. Let me maybe put some cheese or a dollop of sour cream on top of that. Maybe some vegetables like onions or green peppers or spinach or whatever you like to put in like a like an omelet mixture. And then maybe uh, an avocado. That's a pretty darn good meal, right? So you eat that meal. Are you going to have to eat an hour from then? Two hours from then? Five hours? Six hours? No, you'll be able to spontaneously intermittent fast for 8, 10, maybe 12 hours. That's the difference between when you were a sugar burner and eating all that crap that was cheap, but how many times in that 8 to 10 to 12 hours that you're not eating with keto, how many times on your crappy garbage diet were you having to refeed yourself? All right, let's say you ate the meal at 8 o'clock, the first meal, and on the crappy garbage diet, you ate again at 10, then you had a lunch, then you ate again at 2, then again at four, then again at six. And you see what I'm saying here? So all of those little things that were all cheap individually ended up cumulatively being a lot more than what you pay with keto. Have you ever stopped and thought about it that way? That because you end up eating less often because the foods you eat are so what they call nutrient dense, meaning it has all the qualities that your body needs which is why your hunger is at bay. When your body is not being fit, fed well, the reason you get hungry so quickly after eating is your body's like, um, hello. Oh, that around. <laughs> your body's like, hello. You need to feed me what I need. And that includes adequate amounts of fat. That includes the micronutrition that's in the foods that I want you to eat. And if you're not feeding your body the adequate micronutrition and macronutrition, guess what? It's going to scream at you to keep eating, even though you might have just gotten done eating. So that whole Chinese buffet effect, you've heard of that, where you go and you eat a whole bunch of stuff at the Chinese buffet and one hour later you're already hungry again? It's because your body's not gotten all of those macro and micronutrients that it needs to be nourished and feel satiated. Okay, so this is why I think it's nonsensical to say that keto is too expensive. Because when you break down the numbers and you see actually how often you have to eat when you're a sugar burner versus how often you eat when you're a fat burner, there's no comparison. Fat burning lets you go many more hours between meals than sugar burning. And as a result of that, you end up eating less often which means you eat, end up eating less, which even though those individual meals of grass-fed meats and grass-fed butter and organic vegetables and all those things, even though those individual meals, those individual components might cost more money in the short term, you don't eat as many of them because they're so dense in nutrition that you don't have to eat as often as you do with the crappy garbage. All right, let's see what you guys have to say. Welcome in, welcome in. Hey, 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 Kimberly, thanks for being here. Grandma does keto, thanks for being here as well. Keto or outdoors, or keto, outdoors man. Man, those zebra cakes from Hostess is what really killed me. I ate two boxes a day at least. Um, I didn't like those. I liked the fudge rounds. Um, I liked the oatmeal uh, cookie. And I liked, what was the other one? Oh, the Swiss rolls. 
Those were my three. And I would stick them like in the freezer for about 15 minutes before watching television. And I would eat the whole boxes, like one, two boxes at a time watching television. So yeah, they killed me too. Should have known better, but I didn't. Luna Shine, hello. Welcome for, uh, from Colorado. Uh, Keto Outdoorsman also said I'd order $30 a day worth of pizza uh, delivered to me before keto. Eating like crap is so much more pricey than keto. Yeah, I forgot about pizza. I would have plenty of pizzas back in the day, uh, especially in college. I remember eating just whole large pizzas on my own. Wasn't a big deal back then. Um, just shuddering at the thought of having to eat a whole pizza at a time. Uh, Grandma does keto, I believe it. Ours is less since uh, the mister went keto carnivore. Yeah, it's amazing. You don't think about it that way, that when you don't spend all the money on the crap, that you now have extra money available because you're not eating as often with the good quality stuff. So you actually have extra money in your pocket even after spending that extra money um, on the quality food. Thank you, Kimberly. Right on, she says. Grandma says, if you do some real cost accounting over a longer period and get off medications as well, you could take uh, off those costs as well. Yeah, I didn't even bring in that you're saving medical expenses and no pharmaceutical medications and down the road maybe procedures and being diagnosed with various diseases. I didn't even get into that cost analysis of this. I was sticking just with the food aspect of it, but you're exactly right. That would also be an extension of this argument for eating a ketogenic diet and, and in the long run being less expensive, that much more so. And I don't hardly, hardly ever go to the doctor. Uh, number one, I hate doctors because uh, they don't really treat what's going on. They treat the symptoms of what's going on. But that aside, I don't get sick a lot. And so because of that, um, I get to save all those expenses as well. New clothes might wipe out some of the savings. Yeah, if you if you lose a lot of weight, you definitely have to buy some new clothes. But that's a good thing. You don't mind investing in that. One lucky mama six two five says it's so true. My husband is not keto, and he's always hungry. And and that's true. Um, and the reason he's always hungry is you're stoking insulin, which is the key hormone, the master hormone in the entire body that's causing your body to go haywire. And when you calm down the insulin response that is brought on from mostly carbohydrate consumption, um, when you calm that down, then the body's able to operate perfectly fine, which is why you don't panic. It's why you hear keto dieters don't get in, in a tizzy um, on like an airplane, for example, when it's stuck on the tarmac. You've got all these sugar burners. <gasps> oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? We haven't eaten in two hours. And the keto person's going, yeah, uh, it's called intermittent fasting. I'm good, I'm good. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite the difference. Nancy Booth says, Dr. Barry has good YouTube on eating keto on a budget. Yeah, uh, if you're not following Dr. Ken Barry, he does am amazing videos on YouTube uh, and a lot here on Instagram Live. So uh, definitely go check out his work. But the bottom line here in this Jimmy Rants here today is this notion, is keto too expensive? I hope you know by now, after we've broken down the numbers and shown you, this is just another excuse that people give for not doing keto. Now, obviously, if you're on a fixed budget, you need to be real careful about what you choose to get, and that's where you gravitate towards eggs as like the primary thing. Everybody and their mama should be eating eggs in their diet, and if you get the better quality eggs, if you can have your own chickens, and do it that way, that's good. But everybody should be eating eggs in their diet. Even vegetarian vegans, I think, should be adding eggs into their diet, not just for the economic part of it, but for the nutrition that comes from that. Um, and everybody can put some sort of green leafy vegetable, unless you're carnivore or whatever. Um, if you're going to eat vegetables, you can get a big bucket. Uh, the Sam's Club is out that way. I can get a big old bucket full of baby spinach, for about $3 and it's organic baby spinach, $3 and change, whatever it is. And you can eat a little bit of that with every meal. Done and done. Grass-fed butter, you can get uh, at the Costco, you can get Kerrygold butter, three sticks for something like $7. Now that seems like a lot, especially when you can buy it at the grocery store for like 99 cents, $1.29, whatever it is for regular butter. 
but get the good stuff because in the end, it will make you more satiated than if you got the the pale, I call it not butter because it's horrible. Um, Kerry Gold and other grass-fed butters are far superior in nutrition. And remember, it's the nutrients in there, not the macronutrients, not just the macronutrients, but the nutrition that's in things like grass-fed butter that are going to keep you satiated so you don't have to eat as much of it. This is where it comes into why keto is not too expensive is you're not eating as much. Megalift 65, I like it when people say it must be nice to be rich and eat steak every day. Little do they know I'm saving money compared to eating like them. Y yeah, and I would even say be a bargain hunter. Go find when they close out things like steak or hamburger meat. Um, I know when we when I first started on the Atkins diet many years ago, that's what I sub subsisted on was hamburger meat. And I'd throw some cheese on top. And and that's pretty much what I ate early on uh, with like a little bit of vegetables. And of course, it's refined over the years. But when I first started, that's what I could afford. And so that's what you do. Um, and yeah, <laughs> you eat steak every day, but you're not rich. But you're rich because you're not having to spend money on Coca-Cola and Doritos and uh, all of the other junk food that tends to dominate most people's diets. Ground beef is my go-to when budget is tight. Higher fat content is cheaper too. So yeah, um, the main thing is just stay away from the leaner meats because those also will make you hungry. Carol St. Lawrence, hello Carol. She's a good friend of ours. When people spend more money on real food, they also waste less. And Carol, you're exactly right. And especially even uh, Christine and I growing our garden, um, we find that we try to salvage every little piece of everything we grow. And if we don't eat it, we're either giving it to people or we're feeding it to our chickens. So then it becomes a part of the good nutrition that ends up in the eggs that we eat. It's all full circle and you become more hyper aware about it. Uh, I think about all those years I, I drank those Coca-Colas and Little Debbie snack cakes and didn't really care or the and the uh, fast food didn't really care about the way I ate. I just didn't. Nobody put it on my radar screen to care. Um, and I felt trapped that if that was, uh, if low fat was the way I had to eat, I, w I was not having any of that. And so I felt trapped for many years. And so thankfully I got over this notion that keto was too expensive and realized in the long run, it's actually been a lot less expensive. Grass-fed beef was on discount during the Thanksgiving holiday so watch during holidays for those and after holidays for roasts and such. And here's the thing about grass-fed beef and grass-fed meats and, and other quality foods. They're in regular stores now. Used to, you could not find those kinds of things unless you ordered online or if you went to a local farmer or a local farmer's market. Now you can get grass-fed meat at Costco. You can get avocado oil and coconut oil and, and all these quality, real whole foods that we've been begging them to carry. They're carrying them now. And so they have them. And if there's enough consumer demand, guess what happens when there's high consumer demand and they can make a product available out there on the shelf? It's going to be very inexpensive because they have a greater ability to do higher production and the higher production means lower costs of making, which means in the end, the consumer gets a good discount. That's what we're seeing happen. And it, it's pretty awesome to see. I'm waiting for some company to try to market a grass-fed lobster. <laughs> Maybe seaweed-fed lobster. That would be interesting. It'd be high iodine lobster. Yeah, that's cute. All right, guys, so hopefully by now at the end of this Jimmy Rants, you realize keto is not too expensive, that it actually ends up being less expensive. And hopefully we get this word out there more that yes, some of the individual foods are more expensive, but no, overall, the totality of your diet ends up being less expensive because you're not eating as much of these good quality foods. So that's it. Head on over to jimmyrants.com 
and you can see how all of this works. We start on Instagram Live. I talk to all these beautiful people down here who gave me great interaction here on this Jimmy Rants. Thank you for that. You can watch the replay for 24 hours on Instagram. You can then pop over to YouTube and see all of the past Jimmy Rants. If you just type in Jimmy Rants in a search, you will find these. And then the all new Jimmy Rants podcast, which is now available wherever you listen to podcasts. JimmyRants.com again is the website. And until next time, we'll see you then.